Elon spells out the current orbital timeline for Starship, Starlink is coming for your vacation, Falcon performs a hat trick, and SpaceX reveals their zero tolerance for SJWs. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. All right, it's been a week since our last video dropped because I was out of town, so let's catch up on what's happened since. The first Starship Super Heavy duo to attempt an orbital flight remains in the High Bay and Mega Bay respectively, as they both receive their Raptor engines. Elon sharing this photo on Twitter of Starship 24 from inside the High Bay, and RGV aerial photography doing the same for its Starlink loading mechanism. Elon writes she'll be ready to fly next month. I was in the High Bay and Mega Bay late last night reviewing progress, which means she'll actually be ready to fly no earlier than August. I'm just kidding. Sorta. 24 may be ready to fly next month, but Elon didn't say it will. We will have a second Starship stacked and ready to fly in August and then monthly thereafter. There will probably be several launch countdowns before we pass all the abort triggers, but hopefully first countdown is next month. Hopefully. Keep that in mind if you plan on heading down there for the orbital mission. Don't make the same mistake I did with Starhopper. This is freaking spaceport, brah. There are road closures in place for this week, and while it's expected for Booster 7 to move to the launch site on Tuesday, it's also expected we'll be seeing some test tank action. B7.1 was moved to the launch site on Thursday, as was the can crusher cap that simulates aerodynamic pressure. The two were mated yesterday, as shown here via Lab Padre's Rover 2 cam. They joined the Edom tank that arrived on site the week prior, which will test out the new streamlined bulkhead design. Another notable event for the program happened a few days ago. The first orbital launch and integration tower segment was transferred from Roberts Road to Pad 39A at the Cape, where it's being installed directly adjacent to the crew tower. Elon says the SpaceX team is making great progress at the Cape and Starbase, but according to Reuters, the company faces hurdles from NASA. Since Pad 39A is currently the only place the government can launch humans to orbit thanks to SpaceX's Dragon capsule, a Starship explosion at such a near proximity could damage the nearby launch equipment, effectively cutting off their access to the space station. So SpaceX informed NASA they are willing to outfit Slick 40, which is five miles away, to launch astronauts as well, and study ways to reinforce 39A to further protect it from exploding Starships. However, NASA will have to approve those proposals before going forward with them. Moving on to Starlink news, Royal Caribbean has asked the Federal Communications Commission to expedite Starlink approval on cruise ships now that SpaceX has announced the equipment can be used on vehicles. Vice President of Operational Excellence John Maya wrote to the FCC, quote, Working with SpaceX Services Incorporated, we believe we have identified a true next generation solution for our vessels that meets the rigorous technical and operational requirements commensurate with our own growth plans. We believe our work with SpaceX, the first of its kind in the cruise industry, will set the standard for other cruise operators and will mean a leap in terms of guest experience and business operations while at sea. SpaceX launched three Falcon missions in three days over the weekend, starting on Friday with another flock of 53 Starlink satellites, and at the same time breaking the record for most times a booster has been reflown. Lucky 13. And thanks to stable Starlink connections, viewers were able to watch the landing on a shortfall of Gravitas more clearly than ever before. On Saturday, SpaceX launched Sara-1, an Earth observation spacecraft for the German military, from Vandenberg Space Force Base in an all-too-familiar for the area fog cloud, landing the booster at LZ-4 for its third touchdown. Then, in the early minutes of Sunday morning, launched Global Star FM-15 to low Earth orbit from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, a replacement satellite for Global Star's second-generation communications constellation. However, there's also speculation the mission hosted a second classified payload for the U.S. government. This booster flew for a ninth time and successfully landed on Just Read the Instructions. Elon writing, it's super weird that Falcon 9 is still the only orbital booster to land or refly after all these years. The only thing keeping other orbital rocket programs alive is government protection, or they'd be deader than a doornail and everyone knows it. Yeah, government intervention in the free market hasn't exactly slowed since the great bailout of 2008. Concerning Dragon's next mission, NASA announced CRS-25 will now launch no earlier than July 11th after SpaceX was able to narrow down the source of a leak issue with Dragon's Draco thrusters to a valve inlet joint. Teams are now moving to replace this specific hardware ahead of its flight. And now a word from our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. Another month has gone by, and last week the Labor Department announced food prices had spiked 11.9% in May over the last year amid soaring inflation, which reached a 40-year record high of 8.6% at the end of May. Furthermore, when thousands of their cows aren't dying, farmers are sounding the alarm that, because of record-setting gas prices, empty shelves at the grocery store are to be expected in the months ahead. I can't even get a turkey time at my local Jimmy John's anymore. And whether it's intentional or not, all these fires at food processing plants aren't helping my situation. In other words, as predicted here, things are only getting worse. 
The good news is thousands of you have already made the wise decision to receive your emergency food orders from my Patriot Supply. The other good news is it's not too late for those of you who haven't placed an order yet to do so meow. And same for those of you who wish to order more. Check out preparewithspace.com, I put a link below in the description, and reserve your emergency food kit meow. Each kit contains a variety of meals that provide over 2,000 calories per day and last up to 25 years. And right now, save $150 off the three-month emergency food supply while the offer lasts. Shipping is free, and My Patriot Supply will ship your food fast in rugged, water-resistant buckets. I highly recommend you invest in a little peace of mind while you can, as prices and shortages continue to worsen. That's preparewithspace.com. On Wednesday last week, a handful of SpaceX employees with feelings circulated a letter among more than 2,600 other employees denouncing Elon's base Twitter activity of late, calling his behavior a frequent source of distraction and embarrassment, and also managing to squeeze in some Biden-Harris talking points as well. Quote, we are expected to challenge established processes, rapidly innovate to solve complex problems as a team, and use failures as learning opportunities. But for all our technical achievement, SpaceX fails to apply these principles to the promotion of diversity, equity, and inclusion, with equal priority across the company all the while failing to provide specific examples. They even felt entitled enough to make demands of Elon's company that included publicly addressing and condemning the owner's harmful Twitter behavior. Well, needless to say, the very next day, the five organizers were terminated. Company president Gwen Shotwell wrote an internal email to employees, quote, the letter, solicitations, and general process made employees feel uncomfortable, intimidated, and bullied, and or angry because the letter pressured them to sign on to something that did not reflect their views. We have too much critical work to accomplish and no need for this kind of overreaching activism. Yet just another example of the warning myself and Elon were getting at when we said the woke mind virus left unchallenged by reasonable people will prevent humanity from colonizing Mars. And if any of you ex SpaceX employees happen to be watching right now, allow me just to say, listen, I'm not a fan of cancel culture, but this ain't that. What you did was mutiny against the captain. Elon owns the ship you sail on, sailed on. Imagine my shock that your woke college professors failed to teach you this aspect of adulthood. But I'm sure Blue Origin is always hiring your type though. Okay. Jeff. <laughs> okay, all right. I will add that my biggest issue with this letter is that these SJWs were taking anonymous signatures. In my opinion, if an issue is really worth speaking up about, people worth their salt will put their names behind what they have to say, not cower behind anonymity. You signed your real name? Of course I did. What's gonna happen? A vegan is gonna physically attack me? <laughs> But more importantly, if you believe in something, you sign your name to it. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking in. Be sure to have a nominal work week for those of you who are still employed. And until Friday, Godspeed.